What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking another look inside of automatic.css. I'm going to show you what we call auto grids. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think automatic.css is the only utility class framework for Oxygen that features auto grids. Uh, now, in the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a grid with utility classes the standard way, which you can do inside of Automatic, so you have complete control over all of the breakpoints, column spans, all of that. And then I'm going to show you the auto grids because this is really the juxtaposition between creating a manual grid and creating auto grids is going to show you just how awesome auto grids are and how efficient they are and how they speed up your workflow when they are appropriate, which is another thing we're going to cover when to use an auto grid, when to use a traditional grid. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. We don't need to uh, have any more banter. I've got my sandbox, my training site pulled up here, completely blank slate. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a section. I'm gonna add a color to that section. We're gonna do BG and all of these classes that I'm using are automatic.css utility classes. So I'm gonna do BG base ultra light. And then, and that's gonna be a, that's a, a base color, a light version of the base color that you get to choose. You program that into the system. All right, and then we're gonna add a div. This is how you start by building a manual grid. You just add a div to contain your grid. So traditional grid building with utility classes looks like this. If I want a three column grid in automatic CSS, it's grid double dash three. That gives my wrapper the three column grid structure so that when I add a div inside of here, you can see it only goes one third of the way across. Now I'm gonna style this real quick and then we're gonna duplicate it so that you can actually see the cells really well. So I'm gonna style it with BG primary and I'm gonna throw a heading in there. I'm going to make that an H2. I'm going to select my cell, my div wrapper there, not the entire grid wrapper, just that cell wrapper. And I'm going to pad it. We're going to do pad XL. That's going to give me XL padding, which is automatically responsive when I throw that class on there. I'm going to do text white, which is going to give me white text in there. And I'm just going to say grid cell. And then I'm going to make sure that everything is centered. So I'm going to do center, if I can type, double dash all. That's going to center it vertically and horizontally. Um, and then I'm ready to go. I'm ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, let's, let's put a radius on there as well. So we'll do rounded and we'll do M. Okay, so we get a nice little rounding effect there. All right, cool. Now I'm just going to duplicate this. And you see that I have three uh, columns across and I have two rows because I have six items. I'm going to grab the entire wrapper and I'm going to put a gap on there. And the gap is going to be M. Now, that is, that's it. Your grid is done. Except for, here's where you know the manual kind of grid thing really comes into play, mobile responsiveness. These manual grids, when you use these manual utility classes, and this is true for any utility class system, OxyMate, OxyNinja, Automatic.css, they're not automatically mobile responsive. So if you look at them at the breakpoints, this one is okay. That's the XL breakpoint, but at the large breakpoint, they really start to squish. And so the way that you deal with that is there are mobile grid utility classes. So I come in and say grid, and remember this is the L breakpoint, okay, so at grid, L at the L breakpoint, I want two columns. So that's grid L2. So I put that on there and now we have two columns at this breakpoint. We still have three columns on the desktop and at the XL breakpoint, but at the large breakpoint, we have two columns. And then at the medium breakpoint, I really need one column. So I'm going to do grid double dash, whoops, if I can type grid double dash M1. That's going to give me one column at that medium breakpoint, which also extends down to the S breakpoint. So now I have a fully responsive grid, but that took, number one, it took uh, one, two, three different classes. The gap class doesn't count. You're gonna need that on any grid that you create. So, but to create the proper structure that's responsive, you need three classes and you also had to make decisions, right? You had to look at the different breakpoints and say, all right, how many do I want it to be here? How many do I want it to be here? And you had to make those decisions and you had to apply the appropriate classes. Now it's even more complicated when you do a staggered grid. So let me show you that real quick. And I'm just gonna grab this section and put some OWL spacing on there. So OWL XL automatically spaces everything out with extra large spacing. And then I'm gonna add a new div. All right, so there's my new wrapper. I want this to be a staggered grid. It's gonna be a three, two grid. So three, like uh, if you, the first column, so to speak, is gonna take up three columns. 
And then, wow, this is hard to explain sometimes. And then the second one is going to take up two. So it's going to be a three, two. You'll see it in a second. All right. So what's three plus two? It's five. So I'm going to do grid five. So we have a five column grid to work with. I'm going to duplicate this cell so we don't have to create it again. I'm just going to drag it into my new grid and I'm going to duplicate it. So I, it's three, two. So I'm going to grab this first cell and I want it to span three columns. So the way that we do that is we do call span double dash three. Now it spans three. Now I grab this one. I want it to span two. So I do call span double dash two. This is a three, two grid. Now I'm going to grab the entire wrapper and I'm going to put a gap on there so that you can see the space between. Boom. Okay. Now let's look at it. Mobile uh, responsiveness. Let's see how it responds. It's actually not bad. Like at 992, it's still decent, depending on what you, you know, had here. That definitely could be squished in some cases. Um, so let's say that at the L breakpoint, I actually want these to just stack. I want one column and they just stack on top of each other. So we already know how to do that. It's going to be grid double dash L1. Now they stack. The problem is you have a broken grid because we have, we're telling the grid structure to be one column but we're still telling this item to span three columns and we're telling this item to span two columns. And you can see there's a gap here, which means that we have a broken grid. So the way that you fix that, again, there's mobile utility classes for spans. And if you're like, whoa, what is this guy saying? My head is spinning. Exactly. That's why you're going to love auto grids, which we're going to cover in just a second. So hang tight. So I need to grab this first cell right here. And I need to do call span double dash. And at the L breakpoint, I need it to span one because there's only one available, right? Now it looks broken the other way because this one's trying to hog extra space that's not available. So I'm going to grab this one. Remember, this one was spanning two. I need to do call span double dash L one and make it span one at the large breakpoint again. And now we have a functional grid that's fixed all the way down. So you see what I had to do there, right? I had to span cells across columns. I had to make assessments at different breakpoints. I had to then undo the spans at different breakpoints. I can see where people can get lost. Now, is that easier than using Oxygen's Grid Builder? In a lot of cases, it is. It's also faster, especially once you've practiced and you know exactly what you're doing. But there's an easier way. So in automatic.css, we have what we call auto grids. All right. Now I'm going to completely abandon that section. We're going to create a new section. So I'm going to leave that up. So I'm going to create a new section down here. So I'm going to put an owl spacing auto because I'm going to put a lot of grids in here and we're going to do them really fast because they're auto grids. So they're easy. All right. I'm going to put owl double dash. We'll do Excel again. And I'm going to put a div. And I'm going to grab one of these cells and I'm just going to drag that down into, all right, if oxygen lets me, there you go. Okay. Did it, it didn't pop in. Let's try it again. Grab and drag it into my div. Okay. Now we're, now we're set. All right. So we want to make all the grids possible. Wow. This is, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are we good? I think we're good. All right. Oxygen is acting up. Uh, you know when they say they're trying to fix the uh, you know, the the lagginess inside of the builder? I'm hoping that gets done very soon. Okay, so I've got the wrapper selected. We're going to start with the most basic, grid auto two, two column grid. All right, so we're going to do grid auto two. And then I'm going to duplicate my cells. Right now we only have one cell. So I'm going to duplicate it. And now you see that we have our two columns. I'm going to do a gap of M just like all of the others. And we're just going to rock and roll. Then we'll take a look at mobile responsiveness. So I'm going to duplicate this grid. That's going to be three. I'm going to duplicate this grid. That's going to be a four column. I'm going to duplicate it. That's going to be a five column. I'm going to duplicate it. That's going to be a six column. I'm going to duplicate it. Uh, now we'll stop there. I'm going to do, I'm going to, after these six, I'm going to show you staggered auto grids, which I think you're going to love. Okay. So we need to take the auto two off of here and do auto three grid auto three. All right. And then we just need to add another cell. So there's three cells. Now we need to take this one off. Grid auto two becomes grid auto four. And I'm going to duplicate it twice to make sure that we have four, four cells in there. This one, uh, we're going to do five. So I can just actually start duplicating. So two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to grab the wrapper and we're going to change this from auto two to auto five. 
There's my five column grid. Now we need a six column. So I have two, let's go three, four, five, and six. And then I'm just gonna grab the wrapper and say, nah, that's not supposed to be two, it's supposed to be six. So grid auto six, perfect. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You see them all across, perfect. Now, that's it. There's, there's, there's no decision making. There's no, let me check all the breakpoints. Let me add more classes for mobile breakpoints. It's the situation is done. The situation is handled. We told automatic.css what we wanted to have happen at the desktop. And it decides based on the size of the items and all this other stuff, what's going to happen on mobile. So if I go look at the, actually, let's go to the front end. So I'm going to save this and we're going to go to the front end. So there's our standard grids up there. Here's our auto grids. And I'm just going to start breaking this down and we're going to see what happens. Okay. So we've already seen some breakage going on. We went from three here across to a two column grid there. So now I have two and they're stacking the others on top. This uh, is still at two columns. This is broken down from four to three. This is broken down from five to four. This one's broken down from six to four. And we'll just keep going. And you see that it just keeps handling itself all the way down. This one and this one still have small items. Why is that? Because if you have a six column grid, you're putting small items in the grid to start with, right? Now, if you had a bigger screen, like your viewport max was set bigger, those items would be allowed to be bigger. And maybe it would even fit three of them across. But by and large, like if you're using a six column or a five column grid, you're gonna have small items anyway. So it's not like you're putting stuff in here that's gonna squish um, you know, anytime soon. Whereas up here, it's, you know, stands to reason that if it's a two column grid or a three column grid, those items are fairly large. All right. So um, you can see here that it does handle this all automatically. If we do staggered grids, it does the same thing. So I'm going to grab, uh, well, let's just put a new div. So we're going to add a div. Okay. So we'll do grid one, two. And then I do need a cell. I need to steal a cell. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm just going to drag it down in here right there. Oh, I missed. Let's try it again. It's a fun game that we get to play inside of Oxygen. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to put a gap on there. Okay? St same gap that we had on all of our others. So that is a one, two grid. I can also do a one, three grid. So I'm going to come down here, and we're going to change that to grid double dash one, three. There we go. And so you can see it's slightly different. This one is uh, much smaller, the initial grid. So that's one, two, and one, three. Now we can go into the twos. So I'm gonna go two, one, grid two, one. And then I'm gonna duplicate that. And we need a grid two, three now. So I'm gonna delete that class, grid two, three. Perfect. I'm gonna duplicate that. We can go into our threes now. So we have grid three, one. And I'm going to duplicate that. We have a grid three, two, and that's going to be the last one. Uh, double dash three, two. It's getting laggy on my keyboard too. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Let me stretch this back across. All right. So those are also auto grids. So I'm going to go back to the front end. We can see that we've got our staggered grids going on. And again, I haven't had to make any decisions at breakpoints. I haven't had to use any mobile utility classes. As we scale this down, you're going to see that it just adapts them. It turns them into standard grids and then it stacks them where appropriate. Okay. So everything looks fantastic. Now let's talk about use case. When should you use these auto grids versus when are you going to use these manual grids? If you're throwing in items where you don't really care how it breaks down to mobile, right? There's no specification. You don't have a mobile Figma file that you're having to make sure that at every single breakpoint, it's exactly this many of columns and it, the items are exactly this size. Then you use an auto grid because it's so fast and it's so efficient and there's less room for error. Um, if you need granular control over your grids, you want to get nitpicky with it, you want to have full control over every breakpoint, the spans, all of that stuff, then you want to use the manual grid like I did in the very beginning. So I'm not saying that auto grids like 
completely replace any other type of grid. I'm just saying that in certain use cases, they're a lot faster, they're a lot more efficient, they're a lot easier to add. You just pop the class on, you put in your items, you move on with your life. Now, if for some reason the auto grid's not behaving the way that you want it to, simple, just take the auto grid class off, convert it to a manual grid using the utility classes like we did in the beginning, and you have full control over the grid. But in a lot of cases, it's just not necessary. You can just throw an auto grid on, it's gonna get the job done, you can move on with your life. It's a nice feature to have. It's not you know, in any way, shape or form saying, you should use automatic grids in automatic.css because they're a grid killer. They're the replacement, the be all end all for grids. That's not what the uh, pitch is. The pitch is there are certain use cases where you just don't need to worry that much about how the grid breaks down onto mobile as long as it does. You slap an auto grid on there and move on with your life. So let me know in the comments, hit like, hit thumbs up, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about auto grids. Uh, like I said, all the full manual control is inside of automatic.css, but you have the bonus of having the auto grids at your disposal as well. Hope you guys find it awesome. Uh, again, the plugin is still in development. We're shooting for October for release of automatic.css. Right now, we're working on just fallbacks and cleaning everything up. We're not adding new things. Um, so it, you know, we're hoping we're optimistic for October, if not October, most certainly November, uh, it's right around the corner. And there's already a ton of people using automatic.css. If you want to use it, you want to get your hands on it. It's inside of my inner circle. There's a link below. All right, guys, I'm out. Peace.